If you're a fan of music videos like me, you're no stranger to the infamous VHS overlay. There's thousands of tutorials out there on how to make your perfectly good footage look extremely shitty and look like it was made on a VHS tape using programs like After Effects, Premiere Pro, or even like some free softwares on the App Store. Growing up watching Cole Bennett and Brother videos and a bunch of other directors, it always made me obsessed with the VHS look. There's something so raw and dope about it. It just makes everyone look a lot cooler, including me. When I was like 13, I started experimenting emulating the style using some free apps. It looked okay, but you could definitely tell it wasn't real and they're kind of cringy. But even today, the best tutorials I've seen can't capture the raw feel of real analog. Some of them look pretty good, don't get me wrong, but in my opinion, it still looks a little off. When I was 16, my grandma gave me this old Sony CCD VAAF camcorder. It's still probably today my favorite thing I own. With that camera, I figured out how to take 8mm tapes it used to record and digitalize them and put it on my computer so I could edit it. Now, that in itself is pretty cool, but that only means the stuff that I can convert has to be recorded using that camera or an 8mm tape. Since VHS cameras are so popular now and they're trendy, they're not that cheap and I don't really like messing with ones on Etsy and my camera that my grandma gave me is really really heavy and the batteries don't work so I have to carry an air compressor on my back to get that bitch to run that's not a joke look <laughs> Now, it's fine for a little while, but when you're walking around Melrose on a summer afternoon, that shit gets hot and tiring really quick. I also didn't like how much attention the camera brought to me. It got me into a couple places to shoot because people were like, whoa, cool camera. But most other times I just kind of stood out like a sore thumb and I didn't like that very much. So I thought there had to be a better way. And well, there was. It just took a little while of trial and error, but I eventually got it. Now I have to stress, this isn't a tutorial. I mean, I guess you could use it as one, but this is really just me showing off my process. If you want to follow it, cool. This is just how I do dope shit. In order for this to work, you're going to need a capture card. Personally, I use my old HD PVR2 gaming edition my grandparents bought me when I was in the fifth grade to make Minecraft videos. It still works, and I don't think I've ever had an issue with it. This particular model is about $140 today, but thanks to technology getting better since I was in fifth grade, you can get a capture card that's pretty decent for like 20 bucks on Amazon. Thanks, Chinese labor laws. The other things I use are a computer, two RCA cables, one HDMI cable, and a VCR. The last and most important thing you're gonna need is something I call a method of conversion. This is a device that will output your footage that you're going to convert. It's just a fancy name I gave to something really lame. Your method of conversion device needs to be able to connect to a VCR using RCA cables and needs to be able to play footage. For this specific example, I'm gonna be using my old Xbox 360, but a DVD player would do fine too. There are more easy, expensive ways that might be able to work, but remember, this isn't a tutorial, this is just me showing you how I do it. In order for the method of conversion to play our video, it needs to get information somehow. This is where I use DVDs. The desired footage must be burned to a DVD. This way you can play it to your method of conversion. If you're a little lost, don't worry, it'll make more sense when I plug everything in. Here's my Xbox 360. This will play my burned DVD. Its output is plugged into the input of my VCR. The VCR's output is then plugged into my capture card. Important note here, since my capture card is an HD capture card, it doesn't have any input for the RCA cables. Because of this, I have to use an RCA to HDMI converter. This allows for the RCA cables from the VCR to communicate with the HDMI cable going into the capture card. At this point, if you want to plug any colorizers or synthesizers, go for it, but that's just extra fancy stuff. Stuff, I can make an hour long video about all that bullshit, so I'm just gonna stick to this for right now. Open up your video capture software. If you did everything right, you should be able to see your DVD ready to be played. Click record on the capture card, this will record whatever is inputted into the capture card and save it as an mp4 on a computer. Once you click record on the capture card, click play on the DVD and let it play, and when the video is done, stop recording and let the video save. Then BOOM! Congratulations! You just scanned your very own analog back into digital. It isn't that special. If you want bonus Mr. Fancy Pants points, you could record a DVD onto a VHS tape and then play it so you get extra distortion. It looks pretty cool. 
You can also play with the input cable going into a VCR to get it to mess up a little bit. If you don't care about your VCR, you can run magnets over the top of it to get cool color effects. However, this will certainly break your shit, so don't use it if you can't replace a VCR. An alternative would be video synthesizers, but those can be pretty expensive in their own right, and they're all custom made by sellers. Meaning, you can't go buy one at Best Buy or, I don't know, Walmart. You have to find them on like Etsy, and they range from like $200 to $1,000. So if you're really interested, you can go look it up. Anyways, yeah, that's about it. If you like this type of video, let me know. If you learned something new, let me know. Maybe one day we can put to rest the lazy VHS effects slapped over 4K footage. Anyways, go be creative.